Good morning. Welcome back to Blue Hines Garage. It is, today is uh, Wednesday, February 28th. What I've been working on this week is more of the get ready for upholstery work. Uh, you know, what I'm doing now is all the last final, you might call it, detail work that needs to happen to prepare for paint and or upholstery. It's kind of related. Anyway, the side of, you see the side of the firewall has a, a smaller recess where it goes back to the front edge of the firewall in the engine compartment. What we're trying to do right now is fill that void so that on the inside of the truck here, that panel where you see the tape will go all the way over to the left-hand side and on the other side of the truck it'll go all the way over to the right-hand edge of the cab as a straight flat panel. In order to do that I've made some sheet metal pieces. There it is. You see the shiny sheet metal and the edge of the green? I'm adding that piece and this fixture that I'm showing that you're looking at here the, the boards is is a method of clamping that angle piece that I've put in there on this side of that recess and on the other side of that recess because I'm going to use panel adhesive to fasten it and you, know, you see here uh, it's amazing it's kind of ironic in order to do this fabrication you got to take a whole bunch of stuff apart you notice the steering column is missing the brake pedal is missing because this stuff is all in the way. You can't work around here. Okay, well here's what I just thought I'd show you what this clamping fixture is all about. That's what you just saw in the truck. Um, obviously the firewall is in here. And these are the pieces that I'm adding to fill those voids. I'm gonna glue this and glue this to the inside of the firewall recess. And then this, when you tighten, when you tighten the nuts on these rods, it pulls these in, so it clamps this to the side of the firewall while the glue um, cures. So that's what we're looking at. This is the front. This is the part you see from inside. The Here's what the inside of the firewall looks like without the fixture in front of it. And what we're doing is filling this void. Well, there it is, all clamped in there, glued and clamped in there. You see the fixture, when you tighten those rods, the, the little arms on the side here clamp the piece, the, um, the new pieces to the center of the firewall. Anyway, later. Okay, well, there's the first session of the gluing panel adhesive, whatever you want to call it, uh, complete. You see these are quite solid. They don't begin to move. Okay, well, you can see this is dry fit. The piece on the left, where you see the clamps, the piece on the left is the piece that's getting glued in today and you see I'm using the piece on the right that got glued in yesterday as a fixture to locate where the other one goes where the one on the left goes here we go I'm gonna glue these in there's the other side same setup okay well they're glued in there for better or worse Okay, till grinder do we part. <laughs> uh, they're glued in there. I'm sure they're going to work. More to follow. Okay, well, it uh, took a little doing, but uh, there's what those pieces look like. There's the one on the driver's side, and there's the one on the passenger side.
Okay, well I got those uh, mounting tabs for the kick panels glued in yesterday. There's the panel so far for the uh, driver's side kick panel. And it looks like going around those little things at the bottom where they stick out. It's not going to be a big deal. I'm going to try and make this panel out of that Luan, that eighth inch thick plywood kind of material that everybody uses for back panels on the upholstery because that seems like the easiest stuff to work with. Well, there's the two uh, kick panel backing pieces. In other words, the upholstery will get built on that panel. And I'm saying two because the other one is right here. Sorry, there's the passenger side. Okay, well, today is February 12th, Monday, February 12th. Just wanted to show you a little uh, progress report here. Uh, I'm done with, essentially, with the front part of all this uh, upholstery backboards, uh, kick panels on the front here and the door panels on the two doors are fabricated, they're made up. Uh, and he's still need to talk to the upholstery guy and see how we're gonna fasten these. So I haven't drilled an awful lot of holes in them because I don't know what distance in from the edge they need to be, how big they need to be, all that kind of stuff. The two door panels are made and assuming that when the upholstery guy gets here, he says, yeah, those will work. And the two kick panels are made. So next, you see the map pocket there. There's, there's a void underneath the map pocket when the seat cushion goes here and the seat back goes there. There's this big old void, you know, big hole on the side of the seat cushion, the back cushion. So I have to make a panel that fills that, that the cushion will kind of sit against. And the seat cushion, I'm not, I gotta make a base for the seat cushion. I'm not sure how big I'm gonna make that. This is a lot of stuff going on here that's gonna conflict with the seat cushion. Okay, well, today's the 13th. When, uh, yeah, Wednesday. And I've been working on this for probably two days now. So you can see, here's the supports for the little side panels that are gonna go in there. They're not glued yet, they're just fabricated and clamped temporarily where they're gonna go. So that side's done. Oh well, fabricated, it's not done. There's the other side. better pretty much the same okay well what's today I don't know 19th I think of March um, so here we are got these glued finally and you can see it looks like a clamp convention over there there's the driver's side this is the first side that I did and like I said it was a real chore okay well today's Wednesday the 20th it's the day after gluing these. Uh, I uncovered them this morning, uh, unclamped them, I should say, this morning. And uh, they are very solid. I was a little concerned that, because uh, you know, in putting the pieces in place, it was uh, not just push it right on where it goes. Yeah, I had to kind of work it into place. So some of the glue got sloughed off. I was a little concerned that hopefully I put enough glue on the back side of the you know, the metal, the angles. Uh, they're solid, they're very, very solid. Okay, well, the next step in this constantly evolving 
story, whatever you want to call it, um, is to modify these seat cushion supports, the seat back cushion supports. Hello there, good morning. Welcome back to Blue Hines Garage. It is uh, Wednesday, March 27th. And uh, we're still working on all this upholstery stuff on old Hank here. Working on supports for the seat back today. You see that ver uh, horizontal piece going across there. That's a new addition. Um, and it goes across the back here in the center. You see those two bolt holes right there. Uh, it goes across that. That's where those vertical support pieces, wooden support pieces, attach to the cab. Uh, you see these have to come up to the, the square steel tubing. That's where the top of the seat's going to be. Uh, so I'm remaking those vertical pieces. Uh, and it turns out, at least according to what... I believe, based on my calculations, that I need a 10 degree angle on the back side of the top and an 11 degree angle on the front side at the bottom. Uh, I have a chop saw that will cut accurate angles. <clears throat> the problem with that device is that it's intended to cut angles, cross cut angles. I need to, on these pieces, I need to cut the angle along its length, not across it. So I'm going to have to create a fixture for that saw that turns the cut 90 degrees. Okay, well this is what I had to do to make those angles that I was telling you about. You see this is set at uh, 11 degrees right now. The bottoms were 11, the top was 10. So that's what I did in order to turn the boards, the, the, the piece I was cutting. So I was cutting the angle on its length, not across the end of it. Uh, like I said, this saw doesn't account for that. So you got to make something, you know, <clears throat> go 90 degrees. You know what I mean? Off of what the, the, the saw is intended to. Anyway, that's what it is. Good morning. Welcome back to Blue Hines Garage. It is March 28th, Thursday. Uh, show you what progress we made yesterday. Doing these uh, seat upright supports, back seat back upright supports. You see, I got the horizontal piece mounted. You can see the Two screws there on the end. There's two screws on the other end, too. Uh, got the vertical on the right side is mounted permanently there now. I'm going to do the other three, hopefully, today. Starting right now. The one on the left there is just standing there. It's not fastened yet, and that's where I'm going to start today. So, we'll show you more when there's more to show you. Bye. The next step I have to do is mount that piece. It's sitting in there, but it isn't fastened. <clears throat> so, the first thing i got to do is fasten that. I'm going to put some screws in it right here, on the, on the ends right here. So, anyway, that's where we're at here. This took most of the day, believe it or not. But the pieces are all fit, and I think they're all going to work, hopefully. Okay, well, there's two more of them. Those three now are fastened permanent. Got one more to go in that corner. Believe it or not, they take a little while because you gotta you gotta assemble the bottom separate out of the vehicle. So you gotta set up a, a way of knowing where that piece needs to be attached to the bottom piece, take it off, attach it, and then put it in and hope you got it right. So anyway, yeah, it takes a little while. Anyway, more later. Okay, well, it is, let's see, hang on, 5.30 p.m. Uh, I've been out here since, I think, 11, if I remember. And finally got something to show you that's complete. 
those supports for the seat back cushion is done are done they're in there where they need to be I believe I'm getting all this ready because I got to get the upholstery guy here and ask him some questions that I don't know the answers to and I'll adjust accordingly but I'm trying to get a whole bunch of stuff ready to show him when he gets here like all those back panels you see that with the one under the map pockets there is back in that's going to be like a kick panel or door panel whatever you want to call it to close up that corner the seat cushion will go over there kind of close to that it won't go up to it but it'll go close to it I believe I gotta now make the base for the bottom cushion and the base or back whatever you want to call it for the the back cushion <clears throat> so that's my next project I'm into woodworking all of a sudden but uh, I'm really pleased with that that came out uh, it was a chore and it was slow and tedious but I'm really happy with the way it came out I put a straight edge across those pieces and it is straight Hello there good morning everyone it's uh, Wednesday April 3rd welcome back to Blue Hines garage just wanted to give you a little update what's kind of been happening around here recently uh, over the weekend basically um, got the steering column back in got the steering wheel on actually got the horn button and the you know the rest of the piece at the top of the steering wheel fastened so you see the horn Actually, that's not the actual horn button because the steering column is not hollow and that old horn, that old style horn, uh, a wiring won't work on there. So, but anyway, got that done back in and going again, uh, patched a hole in the floor around the, uh, brake pedal cause it was oversized. The pedal got reshaped and moved and whatever and the hole was way big so we got that uh, whittled down to where it should be uh, I replaced the fasteners on that um, support right there they were just regular quarter 20 bolts now they're button heads uh, stainless bolts a uh, couple more you see these carriage bolts with the acorn nuts there's two that are buried up at the top that I had missed before got those in there uh, actually yesterday afternoon I stuck the windshield on to make sure that fits it's not fastened I mean it's not it's not uh, secured uh, you know because I don't have the arms on there to secure it right now but it fits and works perfect so I'm, there's no problem with that so that's nice Today what I'm going to do is, you see I put the cushion in so that I could sit in there with the steering wheel, get an idea of the height and everything. This one's actually a little taller than I think the permanent one's going to be, but that remains to be seen. So today, Good morning. welcome back to Blue Hines Garage. Today is uh, Friday, April 5th, and... Uh, we're back here working on uh, some of this upholstery preliminaries for old Hank. You know, I didn't realize I never did upholstery. I'm not doing upholstery here, but I'm doing some of the preliminaries. Uh, making, making the back panels for the kick panels and the door panels and setting up the support for the seat cushion and the seat back uh, there's some more back panels over there anyway and you know I never realized not ever having done any part of upholstery before you don't realize how much uh, upholstery work deals with other things pattern making and basic carpentry like cabinet making you know I'm making this base for the seat and you see how it's all carved up here to get around and 
and meet with all the different surfaces. One of which is cutting a sheet of plywood like this. You need a rip fence for a skill saw if you want to make any you want to make any accurate cuts. And learn this from my dad, who was an old school carpenter. Learned his trade in the late 20s, early 30s, 1920s and 30s, where skill was uh, valued and something to be proud of. Uh, they made rip fences for their skill saws out of quarter inch plywood, which is like you see here. You take a piece of plywood, you put that straight, that little guide on it. You see the thin, this, the narrow piece there. You make sure it's straight. And the saw runs here, in here, and it cuts off right on that line if, if and when you make that rip fence. You make the rip fence so that that dimension, this dimension, that right here between the guide and the cut is bigger than the dimension between the, the edge of the foot on the saw and the blade. So the first time you run the saw across this piece of plywood, the edge of the plywood is exactly where the blade's going to cut. And that works great when you make the rip fence. Uh, down the road along the way though the blade gets dull you change the blade the new blade cuts a little deeper makes the cut a little narrower on that dimension and then you change the blade you know what I mean as the fence gets old it no longer that edge is no longer where the blade cuts because you change the blades so yesterday and I was trying to do this you see the line across here uh, that pencil mark is where this piece of wood uh, relates, interacts with the seat riser, uh, trying to trying to make that cut accurate when the fence, the edge of the fence is no longer the cut, it becomes a pain in the ass. So I made a new fence. I made this fence yesterday afternoon. I went to the depot and I bought a brand new fine cutting blade that's only going to be used for the rip fence I'm gonna you know I'm learning uh, mark that blade rip fence only so you, it doesn't get dull and it stays in the saw box that box under there is the box that the saw is in that homemade one on the left mark that blade the uh, rip fence only so it doesn't get changed and that edge always ends up being where the cut is so today what i'm going to do is put the fence right on that cut i'll show you put the fence right on that cut cut that off and then add the piece that i want for the overhang uh sticking out past the seat riser i'll just add a piece to the front of it but right now it's not parallel the cut's not parallel and that's what i'm trying to do is um is make the overhang parallel to the seat riser. So anyway, okay, well here goes. Okay, so I'll show you exactly what that did. And this fence, obviously, you can see is eight feet long, and I'm cutting across the sheet four foot dimension. Uh, so that's a bit of overkill. Normally, you have shorter and longer fences. Uh, yeah, I had four foot fences, but none of them were accurate anymore. So I made one. I only made an eight footer so I could cut across a full sheet of plywood. But see, here's what that did it cut right on the edge of the fence so that allows you to make accurate cuts with the skill saw on a sheet of plywood or anything else you're cutting that you can clamp that guide to uh, you can do cabinet work with a skill saw uh, it's slow 
but you can do cabinet work with a skill saw if you have one of these fences or they manufacture them too they're they have them made out of metal. Uh, this is the old school method. So there you see, there's the piece I cut off. See how skinny it is down at that end and whatever. Which one end? This end is the skinny end and that end's the fat end. Not by a lot, but crooked. And now this, you can see, is a pencil line fatter than the seat riser and it is smooth that blade cuts a, a nice smooth cut so now i'm going to make a little piece we want the seat base to hang out past the riser uh half an inch the upholstery half an inch a little more uh so i'm going to put a 3 8 strip on the front of this that hangs out um, past the seat riser and then the upholstery will come down over that Okay, here goes. We're going to cut the little filler piece that's going to go on the edge of that piece of plywood. Now you see what I've done here. I don't know if you can you can see that that well. I've got a four foot level clamped to the fence because that short little fence makes it really hard to make a nice straight cut on a long piece of wood. You know, you got less than two feet guiding a six foot piece of wood uh tough so i've got a four foot level clamped on there should make it a whole bunch easier to make a nice straight cut here goes Okay, so here goes. We're nailing this piece on here. Got one nail started so far. And got a bunch of nails that I already dulled the point. Supposedly when you dull the point, it's less likely to split the wood. And I'm going to go about five inches apart. I left it long for that same reason, so I could put the nail fairly close to the end without splitting the board. crooked.
All right, it's attached. Okay, I'm gonna sand that while the glue is still fresh. So the sawdust goes in any gaps that is, that's there and uh, fills the gaps. Okay, well, here's the finished product. You can see how nice and tight that came. Ugh. And it sticks out past the front of the riser about half inch. It's what I feel what I I made that piece a half inch. So there you go. There's the base. Now what I'm gonna do at the at least what the plan is until I confirm this with the upholstery guy. My understanding is this is going to end up being only a frame with a hollow with the center cut out so you put some uh, webbing across this it acts almost like a spring when you put the foam on top and the center part is got webbing under it it acts more like a spring it's not so stiff uh, but again I got to confirm that with the upholstery guy so that might end up being a I don't know, a four inch frame all around and then open in the middle with the webbing across it, stapled to it. So anyway, we're gonna find that out when the upholstery guy gets here. Later. <laughs>